Hey everyone, this is Jorick. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk education. I got an interview lined up, my first interview, with Natalie Willis Davis, who is an education guru here in Portugal. Many people on consulting calls want to bring their kids, but they're not sure the who, what, where, when, and how of placement and how some of the schools work here across Portugal. She's the person that can answer them, and we'll get the interview to you just in a little bit. But first things first, I want to thank Chloe and Cash Cooper for sponsoring this video and making this video possible and making the connection to Natalie. So thanks to both of you for doing that. And then also for the viewer here, I don't have the two cameras or two phones yet so you're going to hear me ask questions and then you're going to be able to see Natalie deliver the answers and last before we get to the interview I'm putting Natalie's information for her company in the description and also a pinned comment so you'll be able to reach out to her but as you uh, hopefully will see from the interview she's dynamic and she knows her stuff and she is the go-to person if you have kids and you're contemplating a move to Portugal so enjoy the video have a great day Hello, Natalie. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. It's a pleasure. Great to see you, Derek. How did you get started in this field? Well, the short answer is uh, the experience I had placing my own children at schools in uh, London and Lisbon. Um, my children started their schooling in London, uh, where I lived for roughly a decade. Um, the London private school market is one of the most competitive in the world, so I had to quickly learn how to identify a good school and how to get my children into them. And my children were both very lucky to be to attend um, excellent schools uh, in central London. And so I really got to see what a great education looks like. We moved to the Lisbon area in the summer of 2019. Um, there were a lot less schooling options at that point than there are now. Uh, in fact, the number of international schools has essentially doubled in that period. Um, so given that and the fact that there were an increasing number of expats uh, moving into the area, um, I, just, I saw the opportunity and moved into the education consulting space, which was practically non-existent at the time. Um, so yes, it's been wonderful. Um, I really enjoy helping all these families. Oh, it's fantastic. So you are an education consultant, I'm going to say education guru. Could you explain what you do, your role, how you engage with parents? Yes, my, uh, my role is to make a family's move to Portugal as easy as possible by essentially taking care of the school piece for them. Um, so I do this by providing them with all the information they need to know about the schools uh, so they can select the right one for their children. Um, and then I assist them throughout the admissions process. So they don't have to worry about getting the application timing wrong or missing a deadline, for example. Uh, I offer various packages um, to families, but my full service one includes an initial consultation um, during which we go over what the family is looking for in a school. We then uh, discuss my recommendations for them. And during that process, I go over uh, the curriculums on offer here in Portugal, because there are quite a few, um, and we discuss the impact that these curriculums may have on their child's uh, educational pathway. I also provide um, in-depth guidance on the academic and pastoral quality of all of the schools. And I can also um, advise families on which areas to live in based on the schools that they're interested in, so to facilitate commute and so forth. Um, so I offer guidance on the entire process, including when to apply and to which schools. And I essentially act as a liaison between the clients and the school. Um, so I always introduce my families to the admissions teams and book any visits or meetings that are necessary to move the admissions process forward. And I guess one of the biggest benefits of my higher level packages is that families have um, ongoing or unlimited communication with me until the children are enrolled in a school. Um, so if a family has a, a concern or question, you know, they know that I'm at the end of the line, so that gives them a lot of peace of mind. That's a huge value and a huge benefit. I'm wondering from your experience, uh, just because parents are asking this question, how difficult is it for kids to get into international schools, or maybe how hard is it to get into an international school here in Portugal? Yeah, well that's a great question. Um, international school places uh, at certain schools are certainly uh, more difficult to come by these days than they were in the past. Um, and this is due to two factors. So first is the 
increased number of families who are moving to Portugal. Um, but second, it's the profile of these families. So, meaning in the past, families would come here for roughly three years on average, but now they're tending to stay for the long term. So that means that the places aren't coming up as regularly as they did in the past. Um, but it's families, so I advise they apply as early as possible, uh, ideally by the autumn term prior to the September entry. Um, and uh, because the schools will only inform families in usually in March, April, uh, whether they have been places or not. Um, and so given the limited number of, of places, uh, it's best to apply to at least three schools. Good to know. So three schools? At least. Okay. Depending on which ones they are, uh, and then I advise families on that as well. Um, from an education standpoint, are there certain concerns that parents voice to you about moving to Portugal when it comes to it? Is it education specific? Is there anything that you get as like a common theme? Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as you probably know, any international moves involves a lot of adjustment for the whole family. And um, so parents are usually most concerned that their children won't adapt easily to the new environment and to the new school. Um, so this is one of the reasons why families, some families, opt for an international school which is taught in English versus a Portuguese school. Um, so there isn't that language barrier. Um, and then conversely, some families are worried that their children then won't be able to slot in easily when, once they return home. Uh, and so for those families that are maybe only thinking about coming to Portugal for a couple of years, maybe it makes sense for them to continue in the same curriculum that the children were in originally. So an American family may want to stay at an American school in Portugal. All right. um, this is a question that I get, again, I can't answer, which is why you're here, because you have all the answers. And how do schools that you recommend in Portugal, how do they rank when it comes to university play placement? I think a lot of people get concerned about yeah. wherever they're from, if their son or daughter goes back home for a university experience, how does that rank? What does Portugal have to offer? Is it similar? Is it more mm -hmm. difficult? Easier? What's your experience with that? Yeah. Another great question. Uh, so fa families who opt for international schools here in Portugal I can be confident that their children are going to graduate with an internationally rec recognized and accredited diploma. So I'm speaking about the IB diploma, International Baccalaureate, or the A-levels, which is the British diploma. Um, I think what could be different here is the uh, level of university counseling that's offered in the schools. Um, so that advisory service has improved, um, but you know, not all of them can compare with the type of advice uh, students would be getting at a top private school in a mature market, let's say the US or the UK. Um, so, uh, so for additional confidence, I recommend to some families that they hire their own uh, private university consultant. Um, because you know you can't match that one-on-one -on -one time um, and the depth of expertise that the right consultant can provide. And so for this reason, um, I'm currently working on a few partnerships to be able to offer that service uh, within my consultancy in the near future. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So that brings us uh, to a close here. How does someone find you? How can they get a hold of you? What are your social media channels, your website? Yeah. My, so the easiest way to get in touch is through my website, tendoria.com, because that has all of my contact details on them. Perfect. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Tendoria Education is my handle. And so yes, I'm, uh, I'd be happy to speak to all of your viewers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. I greatly appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Nice speaking to you, Yorick. Take care. Thanks.